Right, well there's a 25% chance that the lithium in your phone came from Australia. It was converted into a battery material in China. Um, and it's pretty much in everything, um, which is good. Elon Musk does a lot of marketing for free for the lithium business. So we hope he lives a long and fruitful life. And essentially, the lithium in the battery is because it is the lightest, most reactive metal uh, on the periodic table. Battery demand is forecast to, I think the guys at Panasonic are looking at 75% per annum compound growth. And they're the biggest producer in the market, so they'd be trying to hose that down. We think it's well over 100. There's essentially two main lithium compounds. One is lithium carbonate, which is a first generation material. Uh, it goes into the batteries, uh, predominantly made uh, by the Chinese uh, and the Chileans and Argentinians. Lithium hydroxide is a far better material, but there's very sm few plants in the world. The Canadian and US governments have been trying to fund development of that. Um, so Tesla with their Gigafactory, and there's no IP in the Gigafactory. It is one of the world's largest sheds. Um, that, and that's it, because, you know, for lithium hydroxide, it goes from Australia to China to become hydroxide. It goes to Japan to Sumitomo if you're in the, for Tesla, because Panasonic used Sumitomo to make uh, a cathode. It uh, then goes to Panasonic to make it into the battery, and then they send it to Tesla, and they put it in the battery management system, and that's really where their IP is. Uh, and then it goes into the car. Um, so they're going to do it all under one shed, and it cuts the cost of the end product by about uh, by about 30%. Now it's always good to say, okay, well, lithium carbonate's a first generation, lithium hydroxide's a second generation, Tesla's cars use lithium hydroxide. Um, it's good that it's got a foundation in reality and not just economic theory. Lithium hydroxide trades at about a $2,000 a tonne premium to lithium carbonate, and all the growth in lithium hydroxide is in those green bars, and that's increasing rapidly. <coughs> Now we have a look at the, the lithium fundamentals and, and the cars are great and you know you can see them and it's, it's the sizzle, the stake is really in renewable energy storage, solar uh, and wind. So this was a, a forecast from a professor at the University of Western Australia, um, you know as, as the prices of the battery storage comes down their adoption goes up. Now we were going to be at about $250 per kilowatt hour in 2020 until Mr. Musk in May released the power pack, which is a 100 kilowatt stack, 25,000 US dollars. So he's brought forward that curve about five years. And being in lithium, it's a bit like being in steel in, in 2002, 2003. The Chinese are building all these battery plants, or the, in that case they were building steel plants, and you knew the iron ore demand would come. Uh, you've got every volume car manufacturer in the world with plug-ins and some moving to electrics. Um, but uh, it's really the energy storage that, that, that will drive it. Um, so we're very excited about the lithium fundamentals. And not only for cars, but I mean cars are for the rich people. Um, what we see uh, altruistically is the, the benefits of renewable energy storage. So, uh, case in point here being something like the power wall for, for domestic. But think about what that can do uh, for two billion people in the world that don't have reliable power. So solar panels and a battery gives them light, gives them power for pumps, that means they can pump water. Then they've got sanitation going the other way. Then they've got communication. So all of a sudden you can take two billion people and raise them from the third world to the second world. So as Jack was saying, you know, what are the critical minerals? They are all critical minerals. Um, and natural resource shortage will be one of the main um, thematics behind pricing going forward for just about all commodities. And is lithium going to be replaced in batteries? 
They were invented in the 70s. Sony started making the flammable type in the 90s. Um, we have perfected that technology uh, to the stage now where you can comfortably buy a, a battery made from a lithium hydroxide source that has a 10 year warranty and, and they'll get better. But they will be replaced. They will be replaced by more lithium batteries. The lithium uh, sulfur battery or a solid state lithium battery you know, is undergoing test work at the moment. It has twice as much lithium in it as a lithium iron battery. And the lithium metal battery is the only uh, possible battery that can come close to the potential and theoretical, or the theoretical and actual um, energy density of gasoline. So my strategy is, that's great. Um, so there's two, the, the, the world of lithium supply is evenly divided down the international date line. You have half the world getting lithium out of dirty brines up in the Andes. The other half's a combination of Australian and Chinese hard rock sources. So in terms of making lithium carbonate, we can't compete long term, or our, our, our buyers can't compete long term um, with the brine deposits, but they have some supply issues. They can't crank up production that quickly. It takes four or five years to develop a new operation, if you have a look at Orocobre as being case in point. So you've got this massive demand in the world, but the big guys at the lower end of the cost curve can't respond for four or five years, and then there's some you know, various political aspects of geopolitical risks uh, in operating in Chile and Argentina. The Chinese can build a new lithium converting plant in six or nine months, uh, and we're building the world's largest lithium concentrator at the moment. Uh, to help partially fill that and we'll have that in production within 12 months. So my strategy for lithium is great. I like the demand and the supply thematics. Um, I need to bring in a couple of partners. I've got no operating background in, in lithium um, or marketing it into China for that matter. So I've been able to pull together um, China's second largest and the world's third biggest lithium producer to take life of mine offtake. Uh, and I've got Australia's biggest contract processor of minerals, building the world's largest lithium concentrator, and I haven't put my hand in my pocket. In fact, we took $28 million off the table two weeks ago. So we'll get that up and running. That's the mine. I'm selling down. I still like lithium. I like the battery material storage better. So we need a technology so that we can compete with these brine producers that we have with lithium hydroxide. So our strategy is to be an integrated lithium producer with not a lot of capital down. So this is a, a small flyover of the mine. So Australia, like Canada, is you know, one of the premier mining jurisdictions uh, in the world. Our mine's about 40 kilometres uh, from Kalgoorlie, which is my hometown, so I don't get lost. <coughs> uh, in terms of infrastructure, well, look, you know, we're six hours from Perth. Four hours from the coast, we've got high voltage power that runs along our boundary. Um, we've got rail there in black, gas in green, and the national highway about two, three kilometres away. Um, Western Mining, who are a famous uh, Australian company that got bought out by BHP, had this for about 40 years. But these lithium batteries didn't exist. You had to use it in the traditional glass ceramics, and we don't make enough of that. So you know these these are. They're the world, you know, it's the lightest metal. So think of it as the last gasp of the earth being sick. So it comes, it's the last thing to come out of a volcano, intrude and then precipitate out. Uh, it's white, the waste rocks are black. So we could have a visually challenged geologist, no problem. We bought the adjoining gold mine. Uh, we're gonna put our plant there. Um, the plant is in existence. It's just, we're going to start assembling it on site next month. Um, we'll process about 1.75 million tonnes of ore for about 200,000 tonnes of chemical grade spodumene that we'll send up to China. We'll recover about 55,000 pounds of tantalum uh, as a byproduct and about 80,000 tonnes of mica and about 80,000 tonnes of a subgrade lithium product that we'll look to downstream later on. Um, so we've got a very long mine life. We report using a 0% cutoff, which means we just 
we mine what's white, it goes in the plant. Um, we don't use economic considerations, therefore lots of it falls into a pit. But we won't worry about a mine. They're dirty, they're not all that exciting. Um, but what is exciting is over the next sort of 12 months, um, we'll start construction on site, commence mining, commence processing, and be making money this time next year. So, that's the mine. We're taking 28 million off the table so far. We'll get cash flow, and then we've granted our partners options to buy more shares later on, which will deliver about 65 to 67 million next year. This is the area that we like, is the downstream lithium processing. So what we did is we sat down, we thought, well, we need to come up with a new way. We've got to have an open mind. Let's just try something that hasn't been tried before. The chloralkali process, um, which is, there's a massive plant down there, Niagara Falls, uh, and our pilot plants down there too. So what we've done is instead of turning table salt into caustic soda, we're turning lithium salt into lithium soda or lithium hydroxide. So we just use a conventional cell, conventional membranes. Uh, it's not as energy efficient. Uh, that's not so much of a consideration because their end products are seven or eight hundred bucks a tonne and ours are eight and a half thousand. So I've got a little animation there. That's sort of for the boffins. Um, the lithium chloride comes in, you run electricity, it uncouples, um, the chlorine goes out, the hydrogen goes out and you end up with lithium hydroxide. This is the good bit. It's very, very robust. Um, the plants are reasonably cheap to build, even cheaper if you build them in China. We use market price inputs for the feedstock, which is cool because we've got our own mine, so it's not so much of an issue. Um, these numbers are a few years old. We're using prices lower than what they are now. Um, but you get, you know, any project where you get an IRR of 94% and the payback inside of two years is is reasonably robust. So, you know, we've got um, supply from our own mine if we want to do this. We can use someone else's. You know, we might look to Canada. Uh, or we can adapt it to an existing brine producer. And the strategy that we'll take is we'll partner up. I don't know. I'm not really great at chemistry. I can cook an egg. That's about it. So the technology, it is very low cost. Uh, and one of the good things is the time. So we can have one of these projects built in about two years, uh, as opposed to the Brian guys that are sort of uh, four years uh, and you know at much lower costs. So our plan there is to complete the, the definitive feasibility study before June, move to a full pilot plant uh, and front end engineering in 2017. So, you know, look, we've got a great resource, we've got great partners. Um, you know, the Chinese, we've got take or pay, um, at market, life of mine, no discount. We've got a floor price which is based on actual delivered price into China plus a margin so that we don't go out of, out of business. Um, the lady from Bridging Finance said, you know, you've got to try to mitigate the risks. We've got Australia's biggest contract processor of minerals that guarantees the time to production and the production rates and the quality rates. So we've got great visibility there. Um, we've taken away the credit risk with these guys. Um, we've got a $20 million revolving letter of credit. We draw 100% when the ship leaves Australia. Um, so we've, on the revenue, the marketing and the price risk, we've eliminated that. Um, and we've taken plenty of money off the table to start off in a sell down because otherwise these are just holes and Jack, I don't want to fill it with money, I want to take money out. So thank you very much for your attention and I'm happy to take any questions.